Hello guys. In this video, you will see another ensemble technique in machine learning called as boosting. So in my earlier video, I had explained about bagging. I had given the brief intuition of that. And a classic example for that was random forest algorithm, right? So in this video, I will give you an intuition on what boosting is, how it differs from bagging. Okay. So let's get started. So as we already know, in bagging, what we do, we actually take a low bias and high variance model and then we'll try to convert it into low bias and low variance model so here here i have written the same right and the method that we employ is we do random sampling with replacement and then in the end we do aggregation so it depends on the task at hand whether we are doing classification or regression okay now coming to boosting it's actually a reverse uh, in boosting what we do we actually consider a model with high bias and low variance. Okay. And then we convert it into low bias and low variance model. Our end goal remains same in both of the strategies in ensemble. That is, in the end, we need to have a model with low bias and low variance. Okay. And in boosting, how we do it? We follow the process called as additive process. We improve one model from our previous model. And how do you do it? I'll explain it now. So, suppose let's say we have a data set here. Okay. And again, let us assume we have M records, N features. Okay. So, for the sake of simplicity, let me just write it x1, x2, x3 up to xn. So, these are our features and this is our target variable y. And 1, 2, 3, 4 up to m records we have. So, what we will do in boosting, what we do, we will provide this entire data set to a model. Okay. And this model will be of type high bias and low variance. So, let us call it as a model 1. Then, what it will do? This will give us some predictions and this will have some errors, right? So, since it is a low high bias and low variance model the errors are very high so it will have very high error high errors okay then in the next step what we do we will create another model on this entire data set so this is one of the main key differences how boosting differs from bagging okay so in our second model we give the entire data set to that to train, but along with that, we will pass in this error information to this particular model for the second time. So, suppose for example, let us say this model 1 has made mistakes in predicting the target value for rows 2, 3 and m. Let us take for example, okay. So, we pass this error information along with these three records to this particular model stating that, okay, listen model 2. I have made a mistake in predicting the output variable for these records and this is the error for those particular records. Then what this model 2 will do? This model will model 2 will understand that whatever process was followed by model 1, it is not suitable to predict the output for these particular records here. Okay. So this model in some way will take care on the predictions for the miss classified or misly, uh, wrongly predicted records in the previous model. Okay. So, again, this model will give some predictions and also it will have some errors associated with it. Okay. And again, this model will also be of type high bias and low variance. Okay. So, it remains the same. So, every model in this boosting algorithm will be of type high bias and low variance. Okay. So, you have to remember that. Now, what we do? We pass in this entire data set into another model. Let us call it as model 3. And again, for this model, model 2 will pass in the information about the errors that it made and on which records it made those errors. That information will be passed to this particular model during the third iteration. And so, this model 3 now will, will take extra effort or it will be more cautious on those particular records on which this model 2 has made mistakes. So, it will try to correct the mistakes of model 2. 
okay so it will give some predictions and also give has some errors so why i am saying it will have some errors because this model is concentrating so much on the previous models errors that it will also make its own errors okay so let's say the previous model has um, made error in predicting for the records 4 6 8 and 10th records in our training set so what it does it takes some extra effort to reduce the errors on these particular data records but it will make some more errors on other data records let's say 1 2 3 7 9 okay on these records this model will end up making heavy errors high errors so again what we do we train another model with the entire data set let's call it as model 4 and again pass the errors that the previous model has committed to this particular model okay and we will have the predictions from this model also and again we will have the errors associated with this model so this process will continue and let's say we end up fitting or training k models in this particular algorithm and how many models we train it actually depends upon a parameter called as n estimators okay so it can be 10 it can be 100 it can be thousands so there is virtually no limit uh, to the number that we pass it to this particular parameter okay so if at all there is any limitation it's our computational capability okay so once we train all these k models this is sequential process right so we train our model one we take the errors we, we train another model but while training we inform this model that what errors the previous model made so that it will not repeat the same mistake so this is a iterative process it's a sequential process so it will go on and on up to n estimators that we have specified here once it has trained n estimators model in this case k models what we do in the second step so we aggregate we take the intelligence of every model to arrive at our final prediction and how do we add the prediction from all the models so for that there is a method so what we do based on the errors each model make we assign some weights to each model's output okay so let's say model 1 has very high error okay and we'll assign the weight alpha 1 to its predictions model 2 also makes some errors but let's assume that the errors made by model 2 are less compared to the errors made by model 1 and let's say we have assigned weight alpha 2 to that particular model's output okay and similarly we will assign weights to all the models alpha 3 alpha 4 and alpha k okay and these errors it can be same across the models they can differ from each other so there is no uh, hard and fast rule that error from the next models should be less than the errors from the previous models so there is no hard and fast rule for that why because each model will make its own error it does every coming upcoming model will try to minimize the errors made by the previous model but the, per, the particular model at any given time will have its own errors also right so model 1 error might be high at the beginning model 2 error might be even higher than the model 1 error and model 3 error could be lower than the model 2 error but model 4 error can be higher than the model 3 error so it can be the it can be the possibility okay so for that sake what we do which model makes highest errors will assign lowest weight to them and which model makes lowest errors will assign highest weight to them so in the end for the final output what we do for the final output it is calculated using this particular something like this alpha 1 into output from model 1 so we will say output from model 1 plus alpha 2 into output from model 2 plus alpha 3 into output from model 3 so on and so forth up to alpha k into output from model k right so in the end we will have a model where we are combining the outputs from each and every independent models in the group of models but with the weights assigned to them according to the errors that they make so the model which makes 
very high error will have least weightage associated with it and the model which makes very less error will have highest weightage associated with it in calculating the final output of the prediction variable y. Okay, so based on how we handle this errors at every different models sequentially and how we handle these records which have been mistreated or predicted wrongly based on how we are treating them there are multiple algorithms so they are gradient boosting gradient boosting the second one is called extreme gradient boosting it is in short it is called as xg boost and the third one is called as adaptive boosting or ada boost so there are many other boosting algorithms but we we will concentrate mainly on these three things and there are many different algorithms based on how we handle these errors made at each and every model training okay and how we handle those particular records while we try to avoid the mistake made by the previous model okay so that's it for this video i think i have helped you to gain the intuition on how boosting works actually in my next video i will uh, try explaining one one by one algorithms in detail okay so thanks guys if you like the content please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers or if you want me to change my approach or if you have any suggestions please give it out in the comment section i would be happy to receive them okay so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye